Hey, beautiful people of God. So I'm going to go into various blessings from God because there's different kind of blessings and which scriptures you should apply for God to fulfill those blessings in your life. But first things first, before all blessings, the first things you have, first things first, you have to ask. So Luke 11 and 9, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be open unto you luke 11 and 10 for everyone that asks receives and he that seeks finds <clears throat> and to him that knocks it shall be open john 16 and 24 here too have you asked nothing in my name so god says a lot of people has have asked nothing in christ's name ask and you shall receive that your joy may be may be full uh, a lot of people ask in idols name and they don't get it and a lot of people ask without faith and they don't get what they want That's James 4 and 3 you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss That you may consume it upon your lust So the things sometimes the things that people are asking for is to consume on their lust so God won't grant them that prayer request now John 14 and 14 if you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Now let's get into the different kinds of blessings and how you should apply the scriptures to your life. And then we're going to talk about the good. And then we're going to go into the type of things that can block blessings. But I'm going to go to all the scriptures to help you with, with applying those scriptures to your life for blessings. Blessings of goodness. Now in Psalms 121, it tells us of blessings of goodness. For thou preserves him with the blessings of goodness now you can apply psalms 121 and 3 to your life father please bless me with the blessings of goodness that is found in your word in psalms 21 and 3 thou sets a crown of a crown of pure gold on his head you can apply psalms 21 and 3 that is telling you that there's such thing as blessings of goodness that's a type of blessing now let's go to the blessings of heaven above and of the deep now you can say, Father, you can use Genesis 49 and 25, even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. Now, this, this is blessings of heaven, this is as it tells you here, blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies under and blessings of the breast and of the womb so that is god blessing you if you're barren so if you're having trouble having a child you can apply genesis 49 and 25 to your life father please bless the blessings of my breast and of my womb and remove barrenness that there's a solution for every problem in the bible and god wants you to know how to apply the scriptures in your life hold him by his words I've been teaching people that for over a year now to hold God by his words, apply the scriptures. I have a video called Applying the Scriptures. I have a video called Power in God's Word. Apply God's Word to your situation. Use it in your prayer requests it, because his word doesn't return on to him void. So you need to use God's word. Hold him by his words. I do it and I receive results because he's the God of truth. He proves me right every time. He never proved me wrong blessings of abundant provisions so there's even prayers this is blessings of abundant provisions use psalms 132 and 15 i will abundantly bless her provision i will satisfy her poor with bread this is people's there's not supposed to be a needy around you because people don't use the scriptures of god pardon me <coughs> Forgive me one second. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So this is blessings, spiritual blessings in heavenly places. How do you get spiritual blessings? Well, you would apply Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places places in Christ now father as in Ephesians 1 and 3 
I pray that you please bless me with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. That is how you pray. You hold God by his words. And start using the scriptures, incorporate it in your prayer, and have, before you go to your king, go with a sensible petition. Write out your prayer. Get the scriptures that you need to apply to your life. And see if God doesn't start working in your life, but you're not using his word. That is why people will scream and pray all day, grace, grace, mercy, mercy, mercy. There are scriptures for God to have mercy on you. Use his word. Now, blessings of your storehouse and all you set your hands to do. You can use this scripture for God to bless your storehouse and all you set your hands to do. Deuteronomy 28 and 8. The Lord shall bless the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou setst thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God gives to thee. Do people apply Deuteronomy 28 and 8 to their life? Father, please release your blessings upon my storehouses and bless my hand in anything that I set my hand to do with Deuteronomy 28 and 8. That is how you pray to your Father. Now, blessings of peace and strength. Now, with Psalms 29 and 11, you can ask God to bless you the blessings of peace and strength. Now, we have, the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Blessings, that is Psalms 29 and 11. Now, blessings to possess the gates of your enemies. And this, this is a little bit more. You can ask God to bless you. Genesis 22 and 17 has a lot going on. So I'm going to read it to you in that, that in blessing, I will bless thee. So God, you said you will bless me as in Genesis 22 and 17 and in multiply. And you said you will multiply my seed as the stars of heaven. That means to have lots of children and lots of children, right? Because God did put you here to multiply and as the sand, which is upon the seashore and thy, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Have people been praying for their seed to possess the gate of their enemies? Well, you can apply Genesis 22 and 17. Now, blessings to make thy name great and be a blessing. Now, this is something these people go and join things that they shouldn't join for popularity, for fame. You know, what you guys call fame and popularity, God calls praise and honor and giving you a great name and a blessing. And you know the type of things people do for fame and popularity. But God doesn't give people fame and popularity. He gives them praise, honor, a great name, and a blessing. So we know the type of things people do for that. But if you wanted those things, you should have just applied Genesis 12 and 2 to your life and in your prayers. I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So that is asking God to make your name great and for you to be a blessing. Genesis 12 and 2. God never gave people popularity and fame. He gave honor and praise. Now you can ask for the cup of blessings. Now apply 1 Corinthians 10 and 16 to your prayer life and in your words. The cup of blessings which we bless is is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? But people don't even know there's a cup of blessing. So ask God, Father, pour down your cup of blessings upon me with the blood of Christ and wash me from sin. They don't use the scriptures. They don't use God's word. They don't understand spiritual things. Cup of blessing, that's a spiritual thing. Now bless the work of thy hands and good treasure. This is blessings to bless the work of your hands and to bless you with good treasure. So you're not supposed to steal. You're not supposed to covet. You're not supposed to be jealous and envious of people's things. You're not supposed to plunder. There's a reason why God wants me to share the scriptures with you. Because people are killing, stealing, destroying, plundering, and jealous and envying and doing witchcraft to get gain. And they don't need to do any of that for popularity, for fame, for money, for advancements, for a nice car, for a nice 
for all these things when you can apply the scriptures for him to bless your storehouse, bless your food and water, bless you with good riches, bless you with glory, a great name. But you people don't do that. You find other means of evil and he doesn't like it. And he's judging the heavens and earth if you can't see that. So he's giving you a solution to turn away from your evil and stop transferring and kill stealing and destroying and do an astral projection to steal other people's blessings when you have your own you just have an ass now bless the work of thy hands and good treasure deuteronomy 28 and 12 the lord shall open unto thee his good treasure heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thy hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. So how do you get that? You got to apply them scriptures in your life. Yeah. For God to bless all the work of your hands, and that you lend to many nations, and you don't borrow. That you're the head, and you're never the tail. You can apply that scripture to your life as well. Now, this is to bless your house forever. Bless your house forever. 2 Samuel 7 and 28. And now, O Lord... Thou art that God, and thy words be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now, let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. So how do you get your house to be blessed forever? You ask God. And you can ask, also ask him with 2 Samuel 7 and 29. Lord thy God has, has spoken it. And with, with thy blessing, let thy house of thy servant be blessed forever. Ask him to let your house be blessed forever like he did for Samuel. Now, what are the things that block blessings? Idols, strongholds, disobedience, stumbling blocks, grieving images, accursed things. I, you know, worshiping of other gods. Now let's go into it. What what can stop people from attaining their blessings? Exodus thirty four and fourteen. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Now. Deuteronomy 6 and 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. You shall not go after other gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Now, if you don't know the Father's name, he says swear by his name only. So if you don't know the Father's name, Call him Father. Matthew 23 and 9. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. So if you don't know the Most High's name, the Holy One of Israel's name, call him Father. He will reveal himself to you because you're not supposed to call anybody else Father. That is your Father. Okay? Acts 17 and 29. For as much then... As we are the offspring of God, that's why I said, call him your father. So nobody, you won't be calling on no idol. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we're the offspring, he is our father. Call him father. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. Now, why do I say call him father? Luke 11, 2. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be thy will, will be done as it is in heaven, so in earth. That is who? Your Father. If you don't know his name, don't call on pagans. Don't call on the names of the nations around you or what you hear people calling on. Call him your Father and ask him to reveal his son's name unto you. I'm not those people who's going to tell you all type of gibberish. I'm going to tell you the truth. Call him your father until he reveals his self to you. This manner, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Call him your father until he reveals his name to you. But those of you who know the father's name, the Holy One of Israel, 
or you can you can ask you can say Exodus three fourteen. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me on to thee. Isaiah 48 and 12, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he. I am. I am he. I am. I am the first. I am also the last. You can say that. The first and the last. Revelations 1 and 8. I am, what does he say? Always telling you people, I am, I am he, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Do you people know your God? Do you know the mystery in his name? But let, that is not the reason of this video. I'm just getting into it. If you don't know God's name, you can use the scriptures. But bless you when he um, appeared unto Abraham. Genesis 17 and 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Lord God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Isaiah 42 and 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So now let's go to... You know God, Hebrews 12 and 29, for our God is a consuming fire. If you don't know that, you should. Deuteronomy 4 and 24, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. So, and you're supposed to understand this. Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goes before thee as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them and he shall bring them down before thy face. So shall thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said unto thee. What is he? A consuming fire. Why does he go before you as a consuming fire? Now, another thing that can block blessings is disobedience. We're going to go into idol worship. We're going to, because you need to understand why you ask for your blessings and they don't come. Disobedience. 1 Peter 2 and 8. A st and a stone of stumbling. And I told you stumbling blocks as well. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word. Being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed. What is the problem? Why people don't get their blessings? Disobedience. Disobedience will withhold your blessings from God. Disobedience. Deuteronomy 11 and 12. 1127 a blessing if you obey the commandment of the Lord your God which I command you this day and then there's a curse if you don't but we're gonna read the Deuteronomy chapter 11 at the end of this segment 1 Samuel 15 and 22 and Samuel said has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams so what what is better than sacrificing to god to obey to obey god's word it's a blessing if you obey god's commandments that is how you get blessed if you obey them and it's better to obey god than to sacrifice now jeremiah 42 and 13 but if you say we will not dwell in this land neither obey the voice of the lord your god then you should read what happens next. But I'm going to stop there because you should listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. Jeremiah 12 and 17. But if you will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, says the Lord. What will God do? He will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, says the Lord, if they won't obey. Jeremiah 18. Now, let me say Look around your nation and your people are even the land you live with. Do they obey God? Are they far from him plucking them up and destroying them? Now Jeremiah 18 and 10. If it do evil in my if if they do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I will benefit it, benefit them. So if you don't obey God's voice, he'll repent of the good which he said he'll do unto you that would benefit you if you don't obey him. So obedience equals blessings. Disobedience withholds your blessings. Jeremiah 42 and 6. Now, how good is it? Jeremiah knew that it was very good thing to obey the voice of the Lord. Listen how far as he goes to tell you. 
whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God. Did you hear what he said? Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us. Why? He said, so it be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. What did Jeremiah said? It's well with them when they obey the voice of the Lord their God. And he doesn't care whether it be good or whether it be evil. He's going to obey the voice of the Lord his God because he knows it's well with him when he does, when he obeys God's voice. Now, what is another thing that blocks people's blessings? Idol worship. Idol worship, worship, worship. Wickedness, wicked, wicked, wickedness. Work of their hands and people. And some people even idolize themselves. Now, Acts 17 and 24. God that has made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. So all these temples, all these citadels, all these cathedrals, all these churches, all these places, all these chapels, God doesn't reside there. He resides in you. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. He doesn't need anything. He made anything, seeing he gives it to all life and breath and all things. Now, for as much then that we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, the things that they set up in the earth, graven image by art and man's device. Now, what is the problem with the idols, with the things that they set up in the earth? For this, 2 Kings 17 and 2, for they served idols, wherefore the Lord had said unto them, you shall not do this thing. That'll block your blessings if you serve idols. Because God told you, you shall not do this thing. You're in disobedience. Leviticus 19 and 4, turn you not onto idols. Some of you people go to idols for riches just to get a gain. Nor make to yourself molding gods. A lot of you have molding gods in your houses, statues, carved images, painted. Those are what God calls molding gods. I am the Lord your God. You're supposed to get on your knees and pray to him. You don't need a statue. You don't need a pillar. You don't need a cross. That is what he's telling. Those are called graven images and the earth doesn't understand that up until this day. Psalms 135 and 15. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold. The work of man's hand. All those things you see. Work of men's hands. Now, Isaiah 2 and 8. Their land is so full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands that their own fingers have made. Do they not? Isaiah 45 and 16. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them. They shall go into confusion together that are makers of idols. Isaiah 45 and 60. They shall be ashamed. And, oh, sorry, it was there twice. Psalms 96 and 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. <laughs> Psalms 106 and 36. And they serve their idols, which were a snare unto them. You people serve idols, which are a snare unto you. And what did John tell you? Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Now, graven images. You know graven images, they're set up in the earth. You know why God made me show you that video about the seen and the unseen? Because those are called strongholds. Those are seen and unseen strongholds, landmarks. Strongholds can be on land, sticks, stones, mountains, Whatever the devil uses as a stronghold to, to box in the people. And you don't understand that. That there's spiritual places on earth that are seen and unseen. And there's places with electromagnetic force fields that, get, that people go to get energy, which you call evil powers, surrounded by negative mass, negative matter. Those are places of time, time space continuums with negative space and matter. And God wants you to know that those are portals. Those are places people have been going. All those places they use as tourist attractions. They're sucking the people's energy to keep their wicked kingdoms afloat and keep the people in bondage and confusion and them ruling. And nobody has, con no one understands who their enemy is. You guys have big enemies coming, hybrids, devils, demons, fallen angels, Satan, eh, huge creatures. 
there's different realms. You think Moby Dick happened here. Moby Dick happened in the realm of Utopia. You think that is just, there's parallel universes, there's parallel worlds. You're watching on your TV shows, when you're watching Flash, when you're watching all them superheroes, but you don't believe that you're living in it. Go look up the Golden Ages. Those stuff are real. Find out what did they do to the real supers? What did they do to the people with powers, natural powers of light? You don't know. And why don't you know about it? Now we're going to continue because a lot of people, you're going to be destroyed because of lack of knowledge. A lot of you are going in fire because of lack of knowledge. And a lot of you guys are going to die from the hybrid because you don't understand. And you never studied. And you don't understand the things that you see. You look, but you don't see. You hear, but you don't understand. And that is sad to me. And it's sad to the father. That's why he made me bring out those things. And yet still, people didn't understand them. That there's seen and there's unseen. There's kingdoms and thrones and dominions which you could see and which you can't see. Did Satan go back to heaven since he fell? He didn't. He made a lot of universes and realms and things like that. That is what he did. And he's down on the earth and all those places. He made his own place. That's why he calls it Devil's Bridge. That place. But you still don't get it. You don't understand what a stronghold is. Once those things are set up, you're glorifying Satan. Where are the setups for God? You don't even know the real name of the Father. Now, where's God's land? God's bridge? God's kitchen? No, there's devil's kitchen, there's devil's land, there's devil's wall. Do you understand? When you have something, that energy, and you keep saying those things, you're saying that Satan rules. You're not saying God rules. You name all these places after Satan. You have life and death in the power of the tongue. Do you people get that? You don't glorify God. You glorify idols and you glorify Satan. And that is what he wants me to show you. The zeal I have for the Father, you don't understand. And the way how I understand your wrongs and you don't even get them. You don't understand that certain places are set up as strongholds, stumbling blocks, energy sources, portals, dimensions, gateways to block people from heaven, block prayers, block advancement of God's kingdom. And there's so much places like that. And people don't pray. And God, let, let's keep going. I don't want to mix my emotion and my logic. Graven images. Two, two kings, 17 and 10. And they set them up, images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. That is what these people do. But what does God say? Exodus 34 and 13. But you shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. What kind, how many type of images do they have up of Christ? Those stuff are not supposed to be. How many altars do they set up? How many groves and trees do they cut down? Those stuff are idol worship. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. All ye people wearing crosses and Jesus beasts. Oh, you're going to throw them on the floor. Go fast and pray and ask God what those mean. And you think that you're, uh, it's holy. I'm a Christian. I can wear a cross. Go look it up. Our acts, God. 2 Kings 17 and 41. So these nations fear the Lord. So this is how God's talking about you people. You got people in up to this day. They fear God. And they fear their, and they worship idols. They serve graven images. That is you people. You guys bow down to gods made of hand, made of wood and stone. You bow down to your cross. You pray with your cross and your, your Hail Marys. So these nations fear the Lord and serve their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers. So do they unto this day. God said you never stop. You do it till this day. You still worship Jesus' pieces. You still worship cross. You still bend down and bow down to idols and statues and molded images. You do it to this day. It never changed. Go look. They still do it. And some of the people listening to this video, you know you're guilty of that crime. You don't bend down and pray on your knees and pray only to the Most High. 
you pray with a rosary. Well, I hope the rosary could save you from judgment that falls. Habakkuk 2 and 18. What profits the graven image that the maker thereof has graven it, the molden image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusts therein to make dumb idols? Dumb means, you know, mute, can't speak. They can't talk to you unless they got an evil spirit in you, in it. Trying to deceive you to do evil. Now Isaiah 44 and 10. Who has formed a God or a molded image that is profitable for nothing. But what does God tell you to do to the graven images? Deuteronomy 12 and 2. You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which you shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains what did i tell you strongholds stumbling blocks these things could be mountains hills groves trees chapels citadels buildings seas stumbling blocks the stuff i showed you in the videos upon high mountains and upon hills and upon every green tree and it's stuff buried and hanged now genesis 31 and 19 and laban went to share his sheep and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Even Rachel was guilty of the crime of having graven, having images of idols. She stole them from her father. Now, 2 Samuel 5 and 2. Now, there was some people with David who had some evil images, graven images, images, paintings, those type of things. And there... They left their images and David and his men burned them. What are you supposed to do to graven images? You're supposed to burn them. Do you obey God's voice when he says in Deuteronomy 12 and 2 that you shall utterly destroy them? Those things, you don't. Remember? Obedience, blessings, disobedience, curses. And another person who set up a graven image was Micah in Judges 18 and 31 and they set them up Micah's graven image which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh God wanted me to tell you this because although Micah has a book in the Bible there was prophets who still did wrong he set up a graven image the whole time he was in the house of God serving God that is what he wants you to know Rachel was serving God and she was serving her dad's idols. That is what he wants you to know. Just like the people do it up to this day. So these nations fear the Lord and serve their graven images just like the people. And they do it to this day. That is what God is wants you to know. Rachel and even Michael the prophet had a graven image. But she was more of portrait picture image. Hers his was a graven image, you know, molded and carved work. Now, Isaiah 40 and 20. He that is so impoverished that he has no obligation chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks unto him a cutting workman to prepare a graven image that shall not move. So God tells you guys go find a good tree to cut out and make out a carved work to be your God. And then it moves not. Now, He's telling you, Jeremiah 51 and 17, Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molded image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. Now, a curse stings. How block your blessing? You know what can block your blessing? It's a cursed things. A cursed things can block your blessings. One, like 1 Samuel 15 and 19. Do you all remember King Saul? King Saul didn't obey the voice of the Lord, and they had cursed goods. Wherefore then did thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil, and did evil in the sight of the Lord? When you have, let me tell you something, when you have stolen goods, when you have goods from idols, those are cursed things. Those will block your blessings. That will kindle the Lord's anger against you. If you have stolen goods. Yes. And if you fly upon people's things. Covetousness. 
1 Samuel 15 and 21. But the people took all the spoil. And another cursed thing is having witchcraft items in your house. Those are block your blessings. But the people took all the spoil. Sheep and oxen and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord the God, thy God in Gilga. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as it is in obeying the voice of the Lord? Obey, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. Remember, you're supposed to obey the word of the Lord. He has re also rejected thee from being king. And he wanted me to know that is why he rejected a lot of the children of Israel, the kings, because they didn't listen to his word. And they were rebellious and they did a lot of witchcraft. The house of David and the house of Israel. They did. And they ser they wanted to serve God and serve idols. And God says they do it up to this day. Having a curse things in your house and, and having stolen goods can block your blessings. There are cursed things. And Saul understood that. That's why he said, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. A lot of you people care about the praise of men more than you were than you care about the word of God. You care about how people view you more than you care about how God views you. And they can't sell you from save you from hellfire and they can't give you eternal life. You need to evaluate yourself. Self evaluation is needed for this generation. Now Joshua six and eighteen and ye in any wise keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest you make yourself a curse. When you have cursed goods, you become cursed. When you touch cursed things, you become cursed. When you touch unclean things, you become unclean. Lest you make yourself a curse. When you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. How much of you guys have cursed stuff in your house right now? either of witchcraft or sorcery or of stolen goods, of plundering, of covetousness that is not yours, or it came through your lineage and your bloodline and your family. How much do you guys have that in the bank right now? Do you understand the whole world is in sin? Even slavery money, a cursed thing. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Camry, the son of Zeb Zabdi, the son of Zerah, and the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. When you take accursed things, you listen. Up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thy enemies. Why do you think the children of Israel cannot stand before their enemies up to this day? Because they have cursed things around them and they refuse to let them go. They refuse to let go idols. They refuse to let go rebellion. They refuse to let go witchcraft. They refuse to let go Satan. That is what they don't want you to know. A lot of them worship Satan. Thou cannot stand before thy enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. And if you don't believe me that a lot of them worship Satan, ask the Father. Why do you think they can't get saved up until now? They love idols and a lot of them worship Satan. The strongholds they have set up, saying that this is this is David's, this is oh, this prophet's, this is that prophet's, those are strongholds and they're stumbling blocks. And the nation used those monuments to curse those people. Curse your kings, curse your prophets, curse your seers, so that they won't, that, that you people won't understand. They curse those monuments of them. They curse their spirits. They curse their souls. What do you think they're up? They're not up for good reason. That's why God said he's tearing down every stronghold, every graven image. You guys go and worship at these statues saying, this is St. Michael's. This is St. this. 
and they're cursing the prophets and the apostles. Those are strongholds. Those are stumbling blocks. Those are snares. And those are witchcraft to, to curse the apostles and the prophets. And that's what God wants you to know. They're not supposed to be up like that. He told them not to make graven images and stone images of themselves. The nations made those. And you people need to ask God and stop going to worship at strongholds and giving them power. The more you sin, the more power you give Satan and his agents to rule over the earth. And keeping up those monuments and those strongholds, you give them power over the earth. Because you're saying you worship Satan, you don't worship God. Where is God's work? You have it named after Satan, words in power. He uses the land, he uses the air, he uses the sea, he uses the ground, he uses the water, and you help him. When you name these things after him, you're giving power and glory to him, not to God. Do you get it? Those are strongholds and those are the things God is tearing down. And all those citadels and those chapels and those places that have all those images and strongholds, they're not good for, they're not there for good reasoning. Strongholds. Psalms 89 and 40. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Thou hast broke, brought his strongholds to ruin. Now, Daniel eleven thirty eight. understand this. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not. Shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God. Whom he, so you have to know some estate buildings, buildings, churches, chapels, all those type of places I've been showing you. They are used as strongholds too. And what do you do? You deck it with gold and silver and with precious stones and blessed things. Landmarks are also hold as strongholds. And they're, you, those type of things are used as point of contact so they can, those, the evil spirits can enter our realm to carry out their bidding. And most of them live here because they guys got so much strongholds for them to live here. Most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. Micah 5 and 11. I will cut off the cities of the land and throw down all thy strongholds. That's when God's coming. He's going to cut off the cities of the land and throw down strongholds. This is not even before he's coming. This is judgment that's going to happen. And he says he's going to cut off witchcraft on one day. That is the next verse that follows. But I didn't put it here. Isaiah 23 and 11. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdom. So he's telling you, there's kingdoms in the sea. And he's going to shake them. The Lord has given a commandment against the merchant city. The merchant city is in the sea. Read Ezekiel. To destroy the th strongholds thereof. So he's not only destroying the strongholds on land. He's destroying, destroying the strongholds in the sea as well. <laughs> Jeremiah 48 and 41. Keroth is taken and the strongholds are surprised. And the mighty men's heart in Moab. At that day shall be as the heart of a woman in their pains. Nahum 3 and 12. All the strongholds shall be like fig trees with the striped figs. If they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. Now, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Micah 5 and 11. I will cut off the cities of the land and throw down thy strongholds. Micah 5 and 12. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thy hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images will I cut off, and thy standing images out of all the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thy hands, and I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Do you get it? <laughs> and the times of this ignorance God winked at sin, but now commands all men everywhere to repent so stumbling blocks witchcraft curses now isaiah 17 and 17 at that day shall a man look to his maker and his eyes shall have respect to the holy one of israel and he shall not look to the altars the work of his hands neither shall have respect 
that which his fingers have made, either the girls or the images. You're going to respect your father who made you. You're going to go on your knees and you're going to thank God and you're going to repent to him. Not to a statue, not to a cross, not to a stone, not to a stick. But you're going to use your word because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. You have yourself a blessed Sabbath.